Hi fellow traders, I hope everybody had a great week. I hope you are getting ready to finish this this quarter strong. Looking forward to the second quarter and the second quarter earnings season to kick off. I know I am. Um, but you know, this weekend, real quick, I want to share a quick message with you and recap my week and Friday uh, so I can get out of here and get back to some college basketball. Um, but the message I want to share with you guys is manage your risk. If you don't manage your risk, there's no way you're going to be able to stay in this industry long enough to learn and to develop the skills that you're going to need to be successful in the long term. You know, this in this industry, the income is limitless. It's only limited by your ability, your skill set. And as long as you continue to to learn and to grow and to develop that skill set, you're going to have the ability to make more and more and more money and reach that lifestyle that you were dreaming of. You know, for me, my life, my dream was to be able to go and, and spend time with family whenever we wanted to, that we had the money to be able to put gas in the car to get there, to be able to eat. Well, when we got there, we didn't have to eat. We were with family, so we were good. But just having gas to put in the car to go, to have a decent car to get in the in you know in and travel with, you know. And yeah, my ultimate goal is to live on the beach. That's what I want to do. You know, I want to live on the beach. I want to wake up and sit at my desk and overlook the beach. You know, but I know it's going to take some time for me to get there. I'm about halfway there now. Uh, but, yeah, just like everybody else, I had that that vision that I can do it in a year. And in a year, I'm going to be retired on the beach chilling. And that just wasn't realistic. And when you have these goals and you have these unrealistic expectations, it hurts you when you're trying to manage your risk. Because you're trying to make as much money as you can, as quick as you can, and grow as fast as you can. And that's not the right mentality. You know, it takes time to grow. It takes time to develop these skills. you got to be able to manage your risk in order for you to do that. And there's no way around it. Okay, so tomorrow in my Rolling With Ed series, I am going to share with you the steps to my roadmap to success. Um, these are the steps that I took to get to where I am right now and what's the foundation I built that I can continue to build off of so that I can reach my final destination. Um, so, you know, one of the big destinations that we want to get to is that 10 percenters club. That elusive 10% of all people that start out learning, wanting to day trade, <clears throat> getting to uh, consistent profitability. That doesn't mean you have reached your goals, you know, your dreams. You know, it just means that you have reached the point where you can be consistently profitable and that you can start working toward the ultimate goal or the ultimate dream. You know, you can start saving money, building money, building building wealth to get to where you want to be. That's where everybody wants to be. And <clears throat> in that, I'm going to share with you the steps. You know, obviously, these are the steps that I'm teaching in the, the Roadmap series. But it's going to give you an idea of the, the things that I am teaching and that I'm doing to help you guys get to where I am right now. So that you can keep going, you know, and building the career, the dream, you know, the wealth that you're looking for, you know, everything that you want out of this, this trading deal, you know, that's what you're going to get. All right. So, um, so let me apologize up front. Um, yesterday, you know, we're hosting the NCAA tournament here in Columbia and I ran out yesterday, you know, we've got the most dynamic player in college basketball here. So obviously everybody wants to go see him. Um, so I ran out of here, did not, you know, do what I normally do and take 
um, snapshots of my charts, my trading log, and all of that stuff. But you guys in chat saw all of this. And if there's anybody that did take a picture of it, they did take a snapshot of my my charts and my trading log and stuff. I know a lot of people do. Please email it to me so that I rather have that in my journal than this. But you know, so if anybody's got it, please email it to me because I definitely would rather have that. But I did not want to let this learning opportunity go. Okay, yesterday I hit my max loss before 10 o'clock. Before 10 o'clock, I was out of the game. And, you know, a couple people mentioned it in chat. Some PM me saying, you know, it's just, it's not even 10 o'clock. You know, why are you quitting? I'm managing my risk. The rule that I have is I've got a max loss of $300 a day. Once I hit that, I'm done. If I hit my max loss on the first two trades of the day, I know that I can't go any further. I know I'm done for the day. So I have to shut it down. Um, that's a rule in my small account. That's the rule that I had to have. And that's what helped keeps my equity curve going in the right direction and not starting down on the wrong path. I could have easily got back in this and turn a $300 loss day into a $900, $1,200 loss day really, really quickly. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about because some of you have experienced this. You've turned your max loss days into two, three, four times your max loss days trying to get it back. Um, so number one, I hit my max loss. Number two is Friday. You do not try to gain, regain losses. Even if you think you can, you do not try to regain losses, you know, on a Friday. Um, you know, you just don't do it. Now, admittingly, looking at these charts, I would have had the opportunity to get my money back and then make some more. But you don't know if that's the case. And you don't know how you're going to trade once you've taken these losses, you've hit your max loss, and now it's in your mind that you're trying to get it back. You don't know if you're going to trade smartly or not. So for me, it's, it's what I have to do. If I have to eat that day, I eat it, but I will chew it up and spit it back out because I know if I continue to trade the way I, I know I can trade, I'm going to be profitable at the end of the week, at the end of the month, you know, even if I have a bad week. So... You know, that's the mentality I got to have. You got to have here. So let's look at the first trade here on um, ZUO. Here's the gap down. Um, so this doesn't show pre market. That's why I don't like to use this trader view chart. But it allows me to download my trades so that I can get the actual time, you know, stamp that I entered the trade and, you know, and plot it on the chart for me. So that, that really helps a lot. So here is um, the first five minute candle here. And of course, you know, we've got a little, a decent wick on the top, but if the wick is within inside the range of the candle, I have to use the wick. If the wick is larger than the candle, then I will use the candle stick itself. I'll ignore the wick. But in this case, the wick, was well within the range of the candle body itself so I had to use it once we you know this candle opened down here and it started pushing up it was looking really strong so it triggered me an entry you know once it crossed the five minute opening range high I clicked it I was looking for it to close this gap it was so strong that I felt it could close this gap relatively quickly now, yeah, it could come back and sell off, but I felt it was strong enough to close this gap and maybe reject up here. Um, so I was waiting. So it started to work. And, you know, it gave us almost a 24, which I was looking at potentially taking some profit 
on the break of 24 and then with this being my final target because this is kind of halfway there um but it did not get there it got slammed back down and within two minutes or two and about two and a half minutes i was stopped out of this um hit my max loss because we came you know the idea is if we get a candle to close below this five minute opening range then the trade is dead i take it off and i could reset or whatever but this one came back so hard it took me out of my it you know it hit my max loss then you know here's the 20 ema from the daily chart right here so it sold all the way back through that um you know, here's a daily level here around 2245 ish. You know, and it sold through that. Here's the opening range low. Here's a 50. So, you know, if you look at this, we kind of sold all through this um, support here. Now, we bounced here off of this 21. I think this is like 2165 ish. This level here. We did bounce here. But once we came back through and we lost the 50 and the five minute I mean, opening range low you know we had a nice sell-off right down here and this is the daily the 90 day from the daily chart i mean a really nice sell-off so this was a, a really good trade to make some money off of if i had stayed engaged the problem was by the time this move happened i had already taken another trade lost on it hit my max loss so I meant I wasn't able to trade, you know, these moves. And sometimes, you know, that happens. And this is what causes us to break our rules, to change the rules that we had that got us to where we are. Because now I'm looking at this and I'm like, hey, you know what? I could have made back my money. You know, I'm good enough to see this and trade this and make my money back. Okay, but it doesn't work that way all the time. Because, your, like I said before, your mindset can play tricks on you. When you're in a position like this, you know, your subconscious takes over. And you may not be in control the way you think you are. So you have to, you really, really, really have to trust and stick to your um, rules. Because it's the only way you're going to make it out of this. So this was the first trade. Second trade, you know, and both of these stocks were on my watch list. So I went running to NKE. Okay, NKE, here's a five-minute opening range low. Um, here, if you would have taken it, you would have got stopped out. And here it came back through again. And here's a level just over 84. It's like around 84.02 or something. Um, and we, we sold through this. Now, this is what I mean by mentally, you may not be in the best frame of mind once you take a, a decent loss. I took a max loss on my first trade. Um, so my second trade, it could be in my mind that, hey, if I take a max loss on this, I'm, I'm going to be out of the game, you know, and you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, if anything, I need to make a little bit of money on this. You don't know what's going through your mind. I don't know what was going through my mind um, on this, other than I was thinking about basketball, which was dumb. But this is, um, you know, an ideal thing. Here, I tried to catch this when we broke the low of this candle. And it barely broke. It didn't really break it that much. But that's not the key, the point. The point is, whenever this thing falls through a level like this, you got to give it a chance to retest it. If you just jump on it as it falls through. Now, yeah, sometimes it does work. But more times than not, it's going to go back and retest this level. And it's going to give you a better shot at getting in. I'd rather get in on a bounce and rejection than just chasing it through the level. Um, but this is not what I like to do, but I did it. Um, I can't really explain it other than I was trying to 
make up for the loss. And here we got the bounce back up through this level. And we worked on it for about 30 minutes. And then finally we got the, the move. Um, and you can see we kind of sold off the rest of the day. This would have been a great Friday trade to get in and take profit at different strategic points. Um, but again, I couldn't get back in this. I was max loss. I was out. And, you know, that's the reason why I wanted to show you these two trades and and re really, you know, show you the trap that you could fall into if you're not disciplined. You know, because it's not about me making this back. I know that the market's going to be open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. Um, I start with a clean slate and, you know, do the right thing. And I'm going to be consistent and I'm not going to have a chance of losing, you know, too much money. So that's what, you know, these lessons were, were all about. Again, I'm sorry I didn't get to do it on my normal chart. I don't really like these um, because I can't really see everything like pre-market and, and all of that. And, and all of that is really critical to my strategies, especially the opening range strategy or the strategies before 11. The pre-market levels are really important. So, but hopefully you got the message on, you know, what I was trying to share here. All right, so um, another disappointment, this ARWR, the trade I took in the Grow Your Dough Challenge account, started out working really well. I mean, we had a really nice gain here. Never did get to the first where I would, would have loved to take it off if it failed here. Um, never did make it there. We pulled back to the 20, kind of bounced off it, held it. You know, I'm thinking that we're going to get a push, but the market never really helped us in this. And then, of course, the Friday deal, it just killed us. You know, the, the market Friday just really, you know, put us in a put us in a bind and just could not recover. Um, so I had to, I had to cut it. You know, we closed below the 20. That's the deal. Um, we closed below the 20 and look at it. We're trending down now. You know, I can take a, a uh, trend line and just draw it straight down. So we're making a descending triangle. Um, no need to stay in this trade. Cut it. Don't give up any more money. And let's move on to the next. And, and like I said, for this account, I'm looking at doing a little bit more aggressive trading um, in the second quarter. Centered around my earning strategy. And I'll be talking more about that uh, when the time comes. But that is where I'm looking at. So I may not take any trades in this next week. Um, these lower price stocks, they take a lot longer to, you know, hit levels and everything. So one week may not be long enough. So I'm, I'm thinking that I probably won't take another trade in this until, you know, I implement my strategy. Or if I see one next week, you know, I'll go over it with you guys first before we do it. Um, but that's where we are on it. Had to take it off yesterday. Um, cause we closed below the 20. All right. And here is, uh, we lost 58 bucks on it. 6% uh, on the trade. Uh, so that's the first red trade we made. Um, still, um, six, just at 65 bucks that we've gained in the last three months, which is sad. I mean, really sad. Uh, Should have had more than that. You know, this one really came back on us. We, we were up good on it. It came back. Um, this one, we were up decent on it. came back. Um, these, the market just isn't helping us in, the, in these small trades. It's just not. So we're going to have to up it a little bit and, and see what we can do with it. All right, so 
Um, last week, here's where we are. Started the, the week off with a huge bang. Um, 1046, and then Tuesday, 425, 426. Awesome start to the week. Um, you know, almost 1500 bucks in the first two days. And then Wednesday, I had that loose hit, um, which cost us 117.51. And then Thursday, a little rebound, uh, left some money on the table. You know, this should have been another $500 day, but left some on the table. Um, didn't really have the confidence to trade the market like I needed to. And then come out Friday. Um, 30249 just you know two trades max loss had to shut it down um but still for the week 13 22 26 not bad averaging just over two hundred dollars a day um which is on the low side that's kind of the minimum that I'm looking for um I'm I'm really you know, I'm really looking for anywhere from 350 to 500 on average on these slow weeks. So, you know, not bad. 1805 for the month. So almost two grand for the month. Um, I can't remember what I did. Uh, January, but I think we did around in the two thousand dollar mark in January. So kind of finishing the first quarter the same way we started it, you know, on a slow month. But again, this is the low these slow weeks before the second quarter earnings season kicks off. It's going to be a little slow. It's going to be harder to find stocks to move to give us some really solid moves, but. How do we sustain this? Look at my red days, guys. This is what I'm the most proud of this month. Not the $900 day, not the $1,000 day. You know, I'm the most proud of how I manage my losses. That's what I'm the most proud of. Because that's what's going to help me get to where I want to be. And remember, when we talk about, you know, how do I assess these? How do I take these numbers and determine whether I'm doing the right thing or how my trading looks? I use equity curve. And, you know, ideally you want to see a smooth, but this is day trading. You're going to have pullbacks. You're going to have bumps in the road. You know, so over the last 30 trading days, you can see slight here, slight here, slight here, slight here. Then here's the, the slow week we had, um, week before last. Here's that slow week where we ended slightly red. And then the big day on Monday and Tuesday pushed it up. Um, you know, and here's after Friday this is what's happening so <clears throat> you know this is a, the this tells me that I'm doing the right thing you know that they're going to be drawdowns they're going to be slow periods your equity curve should kind of look like the market sometimes where it's going up it's consolidating you may get a little pullback um, you catch yourself but you're not seeing any significant drawdowns. You know, this big one here is from that earnings trade that I took a big hit on. I don't see many of these. You know, but let's say I saw one here, then I came up a little bit, and then caught another big one, came up a little bit. And let's say, let's invert this. For the sake of argument, let's invert this. So all I did was invert my equity curve. If my equity curve was looking like this, where I went up, came back, traded sideways, came up a little bit, sold off. If my equity curve is looking like this, there's a problem. 
And if you don't stop and fix that problem, this is what's going to happen to you. And you stop managing your risk. You start taking unnecessary ch chance, ch unnecessary chances, um, not sticking to your stop, taking strategies that may not be the best. This is what's going to happen, guys. <clears throat> and that's not what you want. You want your equity curve to look similar to this. And it may be on a slower ramp. It doesn't matter. As long as it's going up, you're building equity. It may not be as fast as you want it, but as long as you stay in the game and you make more money, you're able to take larger share size. You just stick to what you've been doing with just larger share size and your equity curve is going to start growing faster. But don't change what you do. Manage your risk. Don't change your risk management strategy. Stick to your rules. And you're going to be fine. All right. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you got the message. Um, and again, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening, look for the Riding With Ed series. I'm going to share with you some very, very important information, stuff that I think you're going to find very useful and very eye-opening. So um, check out that. So time for me to hit the road. I got to go get check out some more of this basketball here. <laughs>